I would invite uh, festival co-director Namita Gokhale also onto the stage to unveil the book. Festival co-director William Darlimple to say a few words. Thank you. Well, I should say that we have a, a personal connection <laughs> in that Nawab Saab's very distinguished forebear, Shamsuddin Laharu, assassinated my wife Olivia's ancestor 200 years ago. <laughs> And so, in a sense, that makes, that makes Nawab Sab and I allies against my in-laws. <laughs> so, so, I'm very, very pleased to see this book published. And uh, I haven't had a chance to read it, but I'm very much looking forward to it. He's someone that has come in and out of my work a lot. Uh, and uh, fascinating, fascinating stories. So, I envy you having researched it, and I'm very pleased that it's there. But, uh, enough from me, but thank you. I now invite Rakshanda Jalil, author of the book, to say a few words. Thank you, Neelam. Uh, this book uh, has taken almost three years to come to this stage. Let's just show you a copy and maybe tempt you to buy it from the stall there. This is what the book looks like. Uh, this required a fair amount of trawling through the National ar Archives, uh, through the State Archives, through family papers, through oral histories, uh, through oral testimonies, uh, through handwritten notes, uh, unpublished diaries, and so on. And uh, uh, what uh, uh, Willie just referred to was the famous trial of Duru Saab's ancestor, the second Nawab of uh, Firozpur Jhilka and Loharu, which was together at that point, Nawab Shamsuddin Ahmed Khan, who assassinated or is said to have assassinated or said to have been Order. party to it. Or Order the assassination. Yeah. Either way, uh, we've, not, uh, we've left it loose-ended here in our book. Uh, her, her, his wife's ancestor. So, but that's only one claim to fame uh, or notoriety of the Loharu family. In writing this book, I found that in India, there have been any number of families who's, who have uh, a claim to fame or a space in public memory that is not commensurate with either their size or their holdings or their wealth. Loharu was neither especially large nor especially wealthy. But it produced men and women who were, to use an Urdu expression, sahibo saif o qalam, meaning masters of the sword and the pen. Um, coming from Andijan uh, uh, in Central Asia in the middle of the 18th century, if you were a master of the sword, it took you till a certain point. You made a place for yourself in Hindustan. But you needed a little more. You needed something more than that to play with the cards that fate and fortune had dealt you. So these three brothers, Qasim Jan, Arif Jan, Alamjan, who come from Farakana to Hindustan. They, uh, some of you who know Delhi would know Gali Qasim Jan, also named after his ancestor. Now, yes, Ghalib lived there in Gali Qasim Jan, and it's still called, uh, in, a, in a world where 
names are changed, Gali Qasim Jan still exists. And thank God for that. Yes, yes. Um, the ancestral parts of the house is there. So anyhow, as I was saying, here is a remarkable family that is neither too, too, uh, too wealthy, nor especially uh, uh, the size of their holdings is not very large. Yes, it is sort of close to Delhi within sort of a day's journey at that time. But there are so many other families like that. So what is it about this family that has so seized the public imagination? The proximity to the Mughal court is one because it produced all these poets. You would have heard possibly of uh, Ghalib, the poet, Urdu poet, Ghalib's connection with the Loharu family, but that's only one. Ghalib's wife, Unnao Begum, was married to the Nawab's brother's daughter. So um, there is that connection. Uh, uh, Ghalib's aunt was also married into the Loharu family. So Ghalib is the most well-known example. But there were many other poets who are now lost in the mist of time or are maybe not so well remembered, but in their own time and in their own age, they were considered influential people. With partition, uh, parts of the family has been scattered to the winds, part of the big Indian diaspora, some have gone away. But they have continued to exercise, uh, 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 to play a significant role in wherever they might be living. The last great poet the poet, uh, family has produced is Jamil Uddin Ali. Uh, there's lots more to say, but I think we should get to hear it from the Rusab, whose passion it was to make sure that this book comes out. Thank you, Rakshanda. May I now request Durumiya to share his experiences. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the Jaipur Literary Festival to give me an opportunity to have this book launched in this uh, very august uh, um, gathering. Thanks to J JLF. I also want to thank William uh, and uh, Namita to consent uh, to launch this book along with Dr. Rashanda Jalili and I. And especially William because the first time I met him years back, he introduced himself but the same way, but at that time he just said, that one of your ancestors assassinated one of my wife's ancestors. So I promptly looked at his, if he was wearing a jacket because I was afraid he might draw out a dagger. But today his tone has changed considerably and he seems to be very happy that it happened. <laughs> so, so thank you very much, William, for being with us. Now, as uh, Dr. Rakshanda uh, Jalil uh, told you about the family. This was a family which migrated in the mid 18th century from uh, Central Asia, from Bukhara. If, as you have all heard, Bukhara is very famous for its carpet, carpets, although they don't manufacture any carpet there. And uh, this was towards the uh, fall of the Mughal dynasty and uh, a lot of uh, people from Central Asia uh, had migrated to India to seek their fortune. And these were people who, my ancestors were three brothers who came with 200 horsemen to seek their fortune here. And uh, as uh, Dr. Jalil just said, that uh, they were not uh, very, ad not only very adept at the use of sword, but they also took up uh, the Urdu language as their own and contributed tremendously towards the growth of Urdu language. You must remember that the, the official language in those days used to be Turkish, which was very rarely used, and, but the court language was Persian. But Urdu was just coming up at that point of time, and so they contributed tremendously towards the uh, Urdu culture. And uh, so uh, there was, 
the reason I would like to tell you now, this started off as a book that I thought my generation in the family and the coming generation needed to know because we had all forgotten our heritage. And heritage and history are very correlated and they are very important in, one, in a person's life. There are traditions, there are cultures, which unfortunately the generations tend to forget and overlook. So many of my cousins, my first cousins used to sometimes um, ask me what was our uh, history and where did we come from and there were contradictory statements by various people. I had the opportunity of, uh, of uh, interacting with my father occasionally. In those days, the culture was slightly about 50 years back or 60 years back, was a bit more formal between a father and son in the feudal uh, culture. But uh, uh, anyway, what little I heard from him, and then we uh, managed to do some research in the National Archives, and uh, Dr. Jalil also extensively looked into the uh, Urdu uh, part of the book and uh, so we put this together. It was more uh, as, a, as a family a history so that our generations to come would know something about it. But in the process, uh, we found that there were two very interesting aspects which are highlighted in this book, which I'd like to mention here. One, of course, we mentioned about the uh, how this uh, Nawabiyat of uh, Tijara, uh, of uh, Firozpur Jirka, and uh, Luharu came about. And in the, uh, the um, uh, in Luharu history, and, and of course, uh, Firozpur Jirka history, the role of the Raja of Alwar was very prominent. And uh, I'm glad to say that his descendant who I call as my nephew is here with us uh, today, he flew in specially for this program. And I'm very thankful to him because he, his parents, his grandparents all maintained this, um, uh, this uh, relationship which goes back so many generations that uh, we are like, still like one family. And this was the Raja uh, called Bhaktavar Singh who was also known as the Raja of, uh, um, what was that uh, other name for Alwar Raja? Uh, anyway, uh, this is that small village from where they were all adopted. And uh, so, uh, they were such great friends that they decided to convert their friendship into marriage, uh, into relationship. So they married two sisters, Muslim sisters, and one of them became the Rani of, of Alwar and the other became the Begum of, of uh, Firozpur, Jhirka and, uh, and Duharu. And of course, their progeny had their problems later on. But this is the extent to which the relationships between Hindus and Muslims existed at that point of time. And uh, this is also been highlighted in this book, but uh, uh, I'm glad to say that these relationships still in Rajasthan and Rajputana are being maintained. And uh, I thank uh, all of you who have come to listen. I would, uh, frankly, uh, Dr. Jalil is a bit shy, or uh, she's a scholar of Urdu as well. So when uh, I thought of uh, commissioning this book, the first person who came to my mind was uh, Dr. Jalil and it took me a while to convince her to help me with the book, which she eventually agreed to, to do. And uh, she's a great scholar of Urdu as well, besides English. She has written about over a dozen books in both Urdu and English. So I, can I re uh, um, request you to recite some of the poetry which you may have, um, because uh, which you may have found uh, amongst our family members. Now, incidentally, when she mentioned Ghalib, he was only married in the Loharu family. So he was a Damad. And there was another very prominent 
artist called Mirza Dag. Now there is a conflict uh, there because the biographers of Mirza Dag keep on stressing that he was the son of the Nawab of Firozpur Jirka. While my father didn't agree with that view, so we have put that also. Now Dag was a contemporary of Ghalib and also a very, very prominent uh, shair of his day and age. So I will request uh, Dr. Jalil if she can find something interesting to recite to you. Thank you. So uh, we just have about two minutes. Let's see what I can fit in. Uh, this is a family that has produced many, many poets whom, as I said, were very well known in that time. Their names may or may not mean anything to this present audience. Uh, there is, for instance, Nawab Ziauddin Ahmed Khan Nayyar Rakhshan. Uh, he's very active uh, uh, in the years just before the mutiny. He has one of the richest libraries in Delhi at that time, which is uh, set on fire. Uh, these are those what, what are known as men of letters, men of good taste. Uh, and they are, of course, poets, but they also encourage poetry. They have mehfils and nashists in their home. So let's read. Uh, many of their uh, divan were not published, or if published, as I said, were destroyed in the fire and in the terrible aftermath of the mutiny in Delhi. But I've been able to find some nuskhas, as they are said, which means unpublished manuscripts in, for example, the Raza library. Um, so here's a sample. पी के गिरने का है ख्याल हमें साखियो लीजियो संभाल हमें शब ना आए जो अपने वादे पर गुजरे क्या क्या न एहतमाल हमें नाउ लेट मी रीड समथिंग फ्रॉम तालिब दे मैनी ऑफ देम टुक इस्ला और करेक्शन फ्रॉम गालिब गालिब वाज क्लोज टू दिस फैमिली uh, was more kindly disposed towards the many poets that this family offered, uh, 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 had. And Ghalib was known to be prickly with many Delhi poets. He was not the most, let's say, what shall we say? What would you say? Uh, he, was, uh, he was aware of his own, his own superiority Absolutely. to the other poets. Absolutely. But this was a family that he was sort of kindly disposed towards and was generous with the isla or the correction that has always been a tradition in Urdu poetry. So here is Talib writing, Bahar aai hai ye sunkar yun hui mehre taraf bulbul ke har kunj kafas iski nazar mein ek gulista tha. There is a lot of um, sort of uh, sorrow at the passing of a way of life. Many of the Loharu poets write uh, of the, uh, the, the ruin that the city of Delhi has faced, first in 1857, and then they write again uh, in, oh, that's, that's our sign to close. But uh, let me just end by saying that the poetry of the Loharu family needs to be re revisited, not just because it evokes a certain way of life. But I think there is fine poetry hidden within these pages. Thank you.